it's the RC Genius and welcome to Master of the Minis Part 3. Uh, if you haven't checked out this series yet, uh, please go look at the reveal video that I did uh, revealing this uh, project and kind of showing you guys what it's going to be all about. Hopefully you have watched the first two parts already. This is going to be Part 3, uh, kind of to catch you up on what we've done in Part uh, 1 and 2. Uh, between the two, basically what we've accomplished is we've set up a servo, we have set up uh, wheels that are now able to pivot side to side and they weren't able to do that before. We also mounted the receiver and ESC onto the trailer piece and now in this part we're going to set up the motor. Uh, I kind of ran into some problems trying to figure out how I was going to do this because this vehicle is not made whatsoever to handle any sort of motor or servo so this is kind of all completely being custom it was that was the plan from the beginning but uh, what is going on here is motor stuff I did have these two uh, metal pinion gears that I was gonna try and mesh together on a side angle like this but that wasn't gonna work uh, you need something that's uh, got the gears actually mounted uh, if you're looking at the gear like this you want the teeth mounted on the front of there so uh, since I didn't have that I went to my hobby store I actually went to two hobby stores and the first one which was Hobby Town USA uh, I didn't really get an answer I did get um, some advice to go look at uh, some slot car gears where the uh, differential gears were uh, put on an angle there the uh, the teeth but when I went to my other hobby store uh, I actually found something that's pretty cool. What this is is a three-speed crank axle gearbox and it is from Tamiya. It's not very expensive. I'm really happy I found this and what it is is it's basically a kit that you can build your own three-speed uh, transmission. Inside it comes with a bunch of different things. It has uh, it actually includes a little motor in there uh, Which is smaller than the one I have here, but with this one you have to solder on wires uh, And I'm not gonna go through all that trouble right now So I'm just gonna use the one that I have but this is kind of cool to have in the background uh, You also got some grease in here some different gears and I actually already just took out the two gears that we're gonna use today also in here you get some instructions right there and also you actually get the frame for building this little transmission I'm not going to use any of that right now I don't even need the instructions all I need were the gears because I need the uh, correct gear that would fit on the Latrax motor uh, shaft right here because this is a smaller uh, motor shaft than would be on a regular vehicle uh, a 10th scale vehicle and I also uh, needed something that would still fit on this axle right here that is on these trucks. Of course you can take off the tires here, I am going to glue these on before we uh, uh, get into driving this uh, so that way we don't lose any tires along the way. What I did was I made this just a little bit thicker by uh, putting just a very very little bit of electrical tape, wrapping it around the center here so that way the gear would fit a little bit. Uh, it would be a little more snug on there and have a little bit more friction so that way it won't slip as easily. Unfortunately, the gear that I chose from that Tamiya kit, which I'll show you in just a second, that gear actually um, doesn't have a grub screw hole. So what I need to do is I need to glue it. And so I bought some really, really strong uh, glue from my hobby store. It says that it's 5 to 10 second glue, takes like 2 hours to reach full strength, but still this is the stuff you want to use. They said that this will definitely be strong enough to hold gear in place. I'm not planning on letting this truck go up, you know, to even 5 miles an hour. It's going to go very, very slow, and uh, hopefully uh, these gears will be just fine. And obviously, as you can see, this kit is pretty cheap, so if I strip any gears or anything or I need a replacement, I know where I can get one of these again. Now, on to the gears. What I got for the pinion that's uh, going to go onto the motor, this very, very, very micro gear right here. This thing is super small, but thankfully fits right on to the motor shaft. It's actually snow so snug on here, I don't even think I need to glue it at the moment. Maybe if it starts slipping, we will, 
but at the moment it's so tight I'm not gonna worry about it I'm not gonna waste any glue on that or time now the other gear that I got that came in here is this 38 tooth crown gear and this is what I've been looking for all this time because you can see here compared to a pinion gear like this or any other gear you see the teeth are mounted on the side in a circular uh, shape here all around the sides of the gear whereas here they're mounted on the front you can kind of see the difference there you see that they're mounted on the the face of the gear rather than the side so that's what we needed all this time and right here if it, it's so amazing that it just fits right on there and then what we can do is we can mount this motor from the side and these two will mesh perfectly so, what we're going to do at the beginning of this video right now, the first thing we're actually going to do now that I've showed you everything, uh, I have gone off camera a little bit just to uh, kind of cut away some of the plastic bits here and get it so that way we can really just jump into actually building the vehicle uh, rather than having to take, you know, a saw and clippers and cut all this stuff off. So I did all that off camera. Um, but what we're going to do first is we are going to actually glue this gear on so that way by the time the video is over um, the, the glue has kind of somewhat dried and we can uh, get on with this now let's just uh, quickly look at this you see here that I cut the inside out here just like there's this here on um, the, the the rear one uh, the, the front uh, rear axle well, I mean it's a rear axle, but it's the front one and If we just slide that in there There we go So you see then I can put this tire back on Put the motor Mount it right there and then you see we just got a motor set up and that's really gonna work I'm serious that's gonna work so what I think we need to do uh, pretty much just mount uh, or glue this gear right onto the middle of where I taped there Alright guys, so I just had to take it back off and put it back on because this, grew, uh, this glue really, really solidifies extremely fast. Um, it's already uh, almost completely hardened. Obviously, I'm going to let it sit for several hours before um, I actually try really moving it. But I do think that this glue is definitely going to work for this because it is super strong. But as you can see... I'm able to move this and there's like little to none uh, wobble or little to no wobble in there and so that's exactly what we want and this motor now will be able to sit right in there and connect with it and that's just amazing I cannot believe that is is really gonna work uh, of course I went into this hoping that it would and here it is it's gonna work now what we need to do is we need to get these motor wires to come out uh, through the bottom of here so let's see here what we're gonna do the motors gonna sit roughly here I still haven't figured out how I want to secure the motor uh, if I'm going to you know uh, screw it in somehow I don't exactly know because there's no screw holes on the side of the motor so uh, there's only some on the front and I don't have anything to secure it there yet so I'll figure that out later on, maybe off camera, but for the moment, we're going to just try and get these motor wires to pop out through the bottom. So I think that if we actually put two little holes right in the middle there, uh, where these motor wires can, can kind of just slip right in there, that might work. So time to get the drill and make a couple holes. Okay, so I've drilled two holes now, right in the top there. Um, 
I actually did it from the bottom, but it actually goes to the top plate there, so that's just fine. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm going to put this motor uh, down in the position where these uh, wires are already kind of bending. So I'm going to feed the two wires right through here. Here we go. And then just let the motor sit in there for the moment. Here we go. All right. So we still need to figure out how we're going to actually mount uh, this. Well, no, we figured out how to mount it. We just need to figure out how we are going to actually screw it in. But you can see from here, uh, we've got the two motor wires coming in from the bottom. And if we actually just, just for uh, the idea, look at how this trailer hooks up, we're going to have literally just enough room to connect these two uh, sets of wires together. However, uh, we need to also keep into consideration the movement of the side to side with the uh, um, trailer pivoting side to side. So we may have to actually make some new uh, wires and or extensions but we'll see we'll figure that out later uh, once we've got this thing closer towards the end of its build now what we want to do is we need to figure out how we're going to screw this in so let's take a look at it I don't think there's any way that I can do it from the front here because there's no actual area to hook it up so maybe from the top if we do something but I don't want to go into the motor so we're kind of left with a little bit of a tricky situation but that's kind of what this whole project's been about this whole time and I might actually go and just tape it uh, to the vehicle for the moment just wrap some tape around here I know that's not exactly what I want to do right now uh, to have to secure this but we might just do that just for um, kind of a uh, uh, holding it in place for the moment type of thing and I might just do that actually because it looks like we can so let me try that and then we will wrap up this video and maybe hook up a battery directly to it and see if these will actually start spinning so hang on one just just one second okay so of course this is completely temporary hopefully I'll figure out a way to actually screw this in but I just put a piece of electrical tape around this and now, since it's a pretty small motor, I mean, it's it's secure for the moment. Uh, I'm actually not going to hook it up directly to a battery at the moment, just because I want to let this glue on this gear kind of dry uh, for a little while now. I don't want to, to push it. I don't want to, you know, strip it or anything. Uh, but I can move it with my hands, and as you can see here, very gently, because the glue's not completely set, but you can see there will actually have a working two gear little differential transmission so that's what we accomplished today the next video will probably set up some steering linkages here and um, we'll see how that goes but if we can get the steering linkages set up I think then all we need to do is uh, start putting this thing back together um, get stuff hooked up to the receiver and then we can actually start testing things out Thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check out Isaac Lyons who suggested the uh, name for this build series that is now being used, Master of the Minis. So um, please check him out. Please subscribe to this channel. We're doing great uh, subscription-wise. Uh, 440 subscribers, which is amazing. Do 500. Might do something pretty cool, a uh, cool video or something. Uh, so hopefully we get there soon. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time on the RC Genius.